corny, corny. Uh, cool. What's cracking? It's your homie, Lil Mystery. You are now listening to the Emo Brown Podcast, the downest fool in Chula Vista since AC Slater, homie. Ladies and gentlemen and low lives, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Emo Brown, the podcast brought to you by the wonderful people of Grass. Hopper, for all your medicinal recreational cannabis needs, drop your card, make it clack, get 15% out, get three pre-rolls, casas. Three? Uno, dos, three pre-rolls. Emo Brown pre-rolls for $12 every Tuesday, Toka Tuesday. Don't worry. There might be athletes here. There might be professional businessmen. We might have city government leaders, you know, people in political office, but we're still sponsored by Grasshopper, the world's greatest dispensary south of the 54. Yes, we were right there south of the 54. Ladies and gentlemen, another, another local legend, another South Bay champion, somebody who cut his teeth on the pitches of San Diego's southmost city, aquí en Chula Vista, Alejandro Guido, Alex Ale El Guido. El crack, el diez, all of the things, man. I'm telling you, football players come with a lot of nicknames, Casas. I just know you as Casas. That's it. But that's because you don't play football. But here with us today, Mr. Guido. Bienvenido, brother. Ya sé que no estás pisteando, entonces en tu honor, I will have a sip of my tequila. Salud. Salucita, por favor. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, brother. How did you uh, start playing football? Who was a big influence in your life in getting you started? And how did it all lead to where you are now? For sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, man. This is your house, I'm bro. so excited. I mean, that connection of Chula Vista, uh, a podcast that brings people from Chula Vista. I mean, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, man. Yeah. We we really greatly appreciate you guys making the time. I understand this is it's, it's, we're in season right now. You know, we we understand your your schedule and your training regimen and lingering red cards prevented you from playing last week. But still, brother. Yeah. It's awesome to get you in here. <laughs> Así pasó el pedo, no way. How'd you get that red card? I was trying to find out. I was like, I remember you getting a red card. And I was like, fuck, how did he do? Was it aggressive? Because I don't remember you do it going in on somebody. I think it was more verbal or pedo, no? And if you could get a little bit closer. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Bro, it was fucking weak, to be fair. Yeah. So They usually are. They. It was, man. So at the beginning of the game, everyone was like, all right, we're going to set the fucking tone, you mm. know? Someone has this is to a make- Christian show. We don't cuss. Alex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> By all means. <laughs> uh, yeah. So at the beginning of the game, we we're like, all right, we're going to set the fucking tone. Mm. We're going to hit someone. You know? Go ahead. And I was like, all right. I'm going to fucking do it. ¿Cuál me llevo? Fucking the f- first five minutes. Boom. Paz. Yellow card. And I was like, fuck. I wanted, I thought it was like the first five minutes, I wasn't going to get a yellow card. You're setting the tone. You're going to, you know, they're not going to talk to you a little bit. I got it. Mm. So we started playing, 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 whatever. Second half, uh, we're down 2-0 and I'm fucking frustrated. Then one of our teammates pushes one of the player and he gets a yellow and then the player like it's talking, chippy yeah it's chippy he he to yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's smart this player is very smart he's done that the whole season and we already know him so he was a target he was he was drop his name go ahead jose hernandez ¿Qué onda con el jose hernandez, pues, perro? where you at phoenix rising oh fuck uh, dog. i'll see you this weekend in phoenix i'm going <laughs> <laughs> no, no es cierto está muy lejos no yo pensé que era en phoenix no it's oh it's aquí. here i'm going what's up you taking me caesar or what let's go let's wear our orange jerseys <laughs> So yeah, no, he's he's actually a very smart player because he he knows how to get in people's yeah. head, and he got psychological to, warfare, Alex. That's right. It's a big thing. It is. It's, it's football, a, especially, it really bro. Is, yeah, it really is. I mean, see that? Look at him. Mm, talk yeah, to him and get a head, but get a head cup. You don't care. So he got he got to my boy, and he, my boy went up to him. He's like, "You're not gonna say that," and he didn't touch him, but he he fell down like he did, and the ref saw it with his side eye and thought he he, he put yeah he put, he put hands on him. So he gave him a red, and I got fucking heated. Like, ¿Y qué pasó? Hijo de, hijo de tu madre. Mm. Hijo de tu perra madre. Hijo de tu chingada madre. The whole madre. thing. Todo, todo. Y fui y lo empujé. Porque dije, no mames. O sea, 2-0 down. 10 men. Me calenté, güey. Yeah, it was time. I got heated, and I lost it, and I but went and pushed them. That's what makes soccer awesome. But I pushed them, bro. Mm. Like, shoved them. Mm. 
Yeah. A little background in football dramatics. Mm-hmm. If you push somebody, they're probably going to roll like 12 times on the ground, bro. So you got to be careful who you touch and how you touch them. Cause that's just in case you were curious. Go ahead. <laughs> that's right, man. So he milked it and there it is. There it is. And now you missed the first match, bro, no, against Detroit. My bella, bro. You'll, be, you'll get your opportunity. Is Hernandez still uh, Phoenix right now? Uh, he is right now. Ooh. He just traded. So we played Oakland uh-huh. and, and now he went to Phoenix. Ooh, Faber Pelos. Pues ahí va a haber algo. Pinchato picudo, no, bro. No, 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 but, but I'm not going to get a yellow or a red. No? What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be crazy. That's awesome because the, the passion in football is unparalleled. It's unmatched. It, it, it carries all 90 minutes, bro. Extra time, it's there. It's a chip on your shoulder. It's something that you, you just wear as a badge of honor, bro. You're representing your club. You're representing your city legitimately. How did that start here in Chula Vista? That's definitely true. I mean, that's why I identify so much with this club because it's from San Diego mm. and I never had that when I was young. Even when I was in Tijuana, I felt that. I, I needed some something of my community to look up to players and now I have that. You have that, man. And now I'm one of the players and a big honor a big responsibility mm-hmm. and i don't take that for granted How do you, I, yeah. hey man that that's a that's a fact yeah the the love that chula vista south bay south san diego gives uh our loyal players is absurd it's next yeah. level it's awesome you know it's like because we went from not having a soccer team right. we had in, in all fairness we had the san diego soccer we still have it san diego's most winning is franchise but having an outdoor team on the pitch oh it's otro pelo, bro. Hearing the chants of the crowds at USD at Torero Stadium, it's a whole different level. And yeah. I just think, oh, man, imagine if we get to the next level and play at Snapdragon. It's just going to be bananas. This, wow. is, you guys, this squad is built for that kind of environment. It's built for that kind of action, man. And you're a, a big piece of that puzzle. Thank you. It really is, man. Uh, for sure. The, you mentioned right now the, the way it feels at Torero. Mm. Man. It's just different, huh? It, it, it's, it's intimate, it's, it's but it's intimate. loud as fuck. Right. You know, it's intimate. It's And it's funny because you were partying in the supporters group this weekend. That's right. You know, you you were there front and center doing your thing, uh, doing all the chants con los chavos del loyal, bro. Los compitas del chavo, compita Miguel, el papi chavo, all those guys, bro. They all send me messages. Shout out to those homies. Mm-hmm. And you were there smack dab in the middle. So if there's any uh, good, positive thing that came out from doing your red card activities on the pitch... It's that, that you got an opportunity to spend the opening day with the fans, bro. I, I wouldn't say it was worth it, but man, I <laughs> I'll say it, it for you, man. I'll I, say it for you. I, I fucking enjoyed it. I don't man. doubt it. It, it is so awesome. Get win, bro. Be able to be with them. You know, they support. And I, I, like, I'm from San Diego. Yes, sir. I was fucking supporting my team. It's supporting my club, you know. It's your city. My city. What, was, what high school did you go to? I went to Modern Day. Okay. Yeah. But I only went one year. Mm. Uh, because then I went to Florida for the residency program. This is the national team. Mm-hmm. They get like the the forty best players in the country, and they bring them to Florida. They used to do that. Ya no lo hacen. Ya no lo hacen. That program doesn't exist anymore. They don't exist. Anymore. Hey, for how someone's gonna be uh, listed as one of the top forty players in this in the country? Fuck, man, it was an honor, but. That youth career of yours, bro. Yeah, this the this career. second to none. You you were stellar in these in these years, right? It was like two years, I Thank believe. You. Yeah, it was it was two years that I was there, and then I went to the World Cup in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. ¿Y qué tal ahí? ¿Cómo te fue todo representando los dos países? <sighs> eh, bueno, representé a México U15s, and then I chose to go with the U.S. Mm-hmm. Did you see it as a path that was going to be a little bit more um, filled with opportunity for you? Definitely, but it's also I felt more American than Mexican because I was born in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So that that's why I good for you. Man. I, I chose because I was like I was born here. Is that a this, tough decision? It was fucking hard. I don't doubt it. All my family's Mexican. They mm-hmm. were all but like, but Mexico, you know. Like, and I grew up watching Mexico. Who's you your know? team? Uh, Cholos. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, no, uh, Cholos, because I'm from here. Yes, sir. But my my uh, my family liked America. Yeah. My dad. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's going to be a big match in a, in a couple of weeks. It's going to be Cholos America here at Snapdragon, bro. I think it's like a, is that, it's a friendly or I don't remember if it's a friendly, but it, it's going to be a good match. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it is. You, tell me about playing with Cholos, bro. Tell yeah, me a little yeah. bit about your experience there. Okay. It was, it was. It was an experience, man. Uh, so coming out, 18 years old, mm-hmm. fresh. Jovenazo, jovenazo, bro. They signed me. First club signing First, right there for you. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, well, I came with a lot of promise coming from the World Cup. And then I was in in the Netherlands, Holland, for a year. 
And now I got my shop, my first professional opportunity with them. And I would I come in when a year after they go up to the first yeah. division. Mm -hmm. And I was going crazy. I'm with the likes of people I used to watch all the time. Fernando Arce, mm -hmm. Arevalo, like all these big name players. And then also Joe. Joe, I knew him because he was coming up and he, yeah. he won that. So it was, it was really exciting to be there. And then Turco Mohamed. And I get there that season and we're champions. Isn't that crazy? It was fucking crazy. Man. What a way to start your career, oh man. What God. a way to start your club career to be, you know, first club you sign out of being a San Diego local boy, growing up in Tijuana and in Chula Vista, signing at 18 with Cholos, being get called up. Now you're a champion. Yeah, now you got an estrella on your, on your playera, bro. It was crazy. That is bananas. It was. But man. it doesn't stop there for you. Because you decided to take your talents north, yeah, LAFC. So you you've you have the the unique experience where you've not only represented your hometown in San Diego now with Loyal, your hometown in Tijuana con los Cholos. Now it's just a little north as well. You got LAFC, bro. I know. How does how does the preparation differ in LAFC and academy there, such as in, in con Cholos? What do you mean? Like the, the level of, of, of play, the level of training, it's, it's all the same. It's all universal. Wherever you go, you bring your A game everywhere you go, I'm assuming. Yeah, no, but it's, it's very different. Mm -hmm. Different cultures. I mean, in, in Mexico, in the U.S., completely different. Dif so I was, it all, it all depends on the coach, too. Mm -hmm. He brings the culture, obviously. And in Cholos, I had 11 coaches. Isn't that crazy? It was crazy. It was bananas, man. It's crazy. No man. cambio, we. Oh, perdón. Puro cambiar. Puro cambiar. That's all it was. Nothing but change there. Nothing but change. And then they would keep a couple of players and then bring a whole new Ar Argentinos. Yeah, see? So it was crazy. It was, that That just tells you. The, Business the, first. Yeah. Just, Business just first mentality. What it was. And then LAFC, it was more structured. I was with Bob Bradley. It was just one coach for two years. But uh, so that that kind of tells you a lot about the differences of how they manage and the playing styles and everything. But I was with Carlos Vela, who mm -hmm. was the best player yeah. I've, I've, I've played with. I don't doubt it, man. The Messi, the, our Messi. <laughs> La neta que si. Sí. Es un mágico. Yo, pff, yeah, man. How is it playing with somebody like that, training with somebody like that on the facility and just watching what they do day in and day out and how they prepare and how they execute? It's, it's just fun. It's just like, fuck. You soak it in. You learn. You, you, I'm just enjoying it. You know, it's like a tree. I'm like, fuck. I'm, I'm seeing you every day. Play. You're like, I, I got I'm, front row seats. Exactly. For the, <laughs> I got front row seats for this talent. It's, uh, it's sweet, man. It's, uh, and he's a good friend, and he's, uh, he's a very humble dude. Like people portray him differently because he doesn't want to go to the national team. Mm. But man, he's so chill. Too. Everybody's got their story to tell about that, you Brits, know, bro. So they, we did like, a, they did like a little cookout. For the team to get to know the family and everything. When he when my parents walked in, he was like, Hey señor, señora, como están? Les doy algo de tomar, que quieren? O sea, bien acomedido. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, like a Mexican warm, yeah. like trying. And people don't see that. Like, he's a fucking good person. It's just, they talk shit in the media and they. That's all they, they do, this. bro. That's all the media has. Yeah. And you know what? If he showed you that side of himself, mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Only it, it's for you guys anyway. Right. It's that side of, of how he is. Isn't for fucking the media or That's anyone true. else. It's for you guys. It's for people who he includes his inner circle. Yeah. He gets a bum deal sometimes on, you know, choosing not to uh, play for a three, but every, everybody has a reasons on why they do or don't do things. Man. That's true. Now he look at you, bro. Now you're here yeah. full circle That's right. down to San Diego, the San Diego loyal. Tell me about your experience so far with San Diego. It's been nothing but great, man. I mean, just tough moments losing in the playoffs for yeah. sure. Like feeling like we let the city down, especially with my red card. But other than that, it's been an amazing experience, man. The connections I've made with people, uh, with the community, getting to know different parts of the community, uh, being able to be with a good group of people in the, in the club, mm -hmm. you know, from front staff from players, from coaches, being with Landon Donovan, all of that, man. That's what I love about what the loyal bring to, to our city. Um, El Ricardo, El, El Ricardo Campos, stand-up guy. I, I've hung out with him a few times, got a chance to pick his brain on on goals, aspirations, and, and, and the road for the loyal. You guys do a lot to inject yourselves into the community. Yeah. That's awesome. I see him down here. He's always asking, how can we help with your foundation? How can we help with everything going on at the brewery? How can we help with this? I said, hey, man, let's make a beer. Let's do this. Let's do that. It's just awesome to have that kind of interaction. And 
I can reach out, call him or text him. And I know he's going to respond, you know, and that's the kind of thing that people down here in the South Bay appreciate. We've had watch parties at the brewery. We, uh, we've taken our squads out from the, either like our, our staff from the bars or the staff from the brewery or just from here, from the foundation and, and, and our crew. We've gone to games. We've watched games. El ambiente es otro pelo, bro. Yeah. El ambiente es, it's like going to a game down in Caliente, yeah. you know, and people don't understand that. When you go to a match in Tijuana, whether it's going to be baseball con los toros or cholos, ahí, güey, es otro pedo. It's a completely different experience. Yeah. For baseball, people compare it right now to the WBC is, why can't we do this? And what we do at the World Baseball Classic, why can't we do it in the majors? They should. Yeah. Making, making it a, a, a better environment, a más, el ambiente más a gusto, that's what draws people in. Cholos do that. The loyal have been doing that. It's just awesome to see like the supporters group out there nonstop chanting all the way through. Way Meto Carlos and I've sat there with them before, and it's just a different game. It really is. You're not sitting down. They can give you whatever seat number or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. You're not gonna sit down. You're just gonna be chanting, jumping, banging that drum, blowing that horn, singing that song. That must feel awesome on the pitch. Minute eighty five down one goal and you're just searching for that last bar of energy inside of you and then you just hear all the supporters group chavos de loyal the locals uh como sound all of them Same. just the chant yeah all the rainbows of el compita he's gonna get mad the fiends sorry yeah. carl i got you bro the fiends bro everybody just out there screaming chanting how does that feel to have that on your side 100 percent. that changes the game 100 percent. i mean I, I listened to the podcast with, with Ricardo mm -hmm. and. Estaba en güey. No te quiero, güey. Pero igual. Con razón habló. Sí, I was like, damn, you're talking in cursive, Ricardo, take it easy, bro. Empezó a hablar Brasil, eh, portugués. Hey, es el brasileño, vamos al carnaval, eh, de que cálmate, champion. <laughs> Ricardo, bro, respectfully, bro. No. <laughs> uh, but. He mentioned that game against Galaxy, mm -hmm. and I remember that game. Yeah. Man. It was crazy. We were running our asses off, and we were getting smacked, but everyone stayed, even, and they were just, like, chanting. They wanted us to get that goal. Yeah. That goal, just a, el, el gol de, ya sabes? Sí. El, de, el, el de honor, bro. El, honor, el, el que honor. Que, hey. Y estábamos intentando, y we couldn't, we didn't do it. But it was not stayed. for lack of trying. Yeah, but they stayed, and they respected that and they cheered us on and fuck oh, man that was amazing i've never seen that like if you do that at cholo mm. oof. Oof. no ni yeah. te aparezcas no, no man, desaparece, man, desaparece una semana hasta el próximo partido bro that's right but um man it was it was that just showed me you guys have built something special yeah. here with, with the loyal and, and the supporters group it's you can see that it's endearing, it's genuine, and, and they really want to watch you guys succeed. Okay. What is the plan this season? What, what are the expectations? New coach, mm -hmm. Nate Miller, took over the coaching reins right. from Landon. Um, what are the expectations for yourself as an individual and as a team collectively? Yeah. Uh, as a team, we want to win it. All of it. All of it. No yeah. more first-round exits. No, 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 no chance. We're going to win it. That's, so. that's it. I want to clip that one right there, bro, because yeah. we, we, we heard him say, we want to win it. We're going to win it, I think I heard him say. Yeah. That's it. Way. We have to. Yeah. We have the, we, we, Loaded. We have everything yeah. to do it. It'd be a shame if we don't do it. So that's, that's it. I can't tell the, you anything else. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, like, that's the top. So. And for yourself, is there any, do you, do you go into every season with goals, uh, metas, I wanted to accomplish this statistic feat this season i want to do this as a teammate and how my team flourish to the next level this season like what do you look for so i do give myself like benchmarks like mm -hmm. hey like little objectives like hey i want to have this amount of goals or assists that's what i used to do that was you know I, it was more of a selfish mm -hmm. you know egocentric like objectives stat driven mentality Ex exactly okay. but not anymore now i think about it differently like this season La for example, last season, I wanted to play as many amount of games I could and finish 90 minutes because that's been something that I struggled with in my past. I couldn't finish 90 minutes. I just couldn't. Injuries. Injuries. I got so many Not injuries. the fatigue because I've seen you run, bro. You're no, nonstop. No, no, no. Last it was injuries. Yeah. I would get injured and people would tell me, you can't play 90 minutes. You'll get injured. What does that make you feel when they tell you that? I believed it for some time. Yeah. You know? They made me believe it. And then I come here and they're like, no, 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 no. You can do it. We're going to prepare you. You just have to do this, this, and this. We're going to prep you for it. And 
I played 30 games last season. Get with him, bro. A bunch of 90-minute games. Look at you, man. So, yeah, man. Uh, but going back to the objectives, they've changed. Now, this year, I want to be a better leader. Mm. You know? For example, what happened in the, in the, in the quarterfinal game? I got a red card. Mm. I didn't keep my cool. That's not a leader. You know, a leader is like, all right, let's keep going. Unless your objective was to get a red card. Then you, then <laughs> you, you excelled, go. my friend. That's right. You made your goal. <laughs> <laughs> El putazo. El putazo. Hey, hey, putazo. Voy a meter un putazo hoy. Oh, look at me. Uh, mission accomplished. Putazo landed. <laughs> Tómala. <laughs> y se la tomó, bro. Se la tomó. Pero sí, güey. So that's, that's right now my objective. Being a better leader, you know. Um, Coming out of the season, I'm like, all right, I made a difference as a leader this this year. And then doing more in my community. All right. That's that's something that I wanted to improve this year. I mean, you're off to a great start. You have a mural on Third Avenue yeah, across the street from the brewery now. I mean, it's I right could, there. Yeah. Look I at that. How does that feel? How did that? I, it never, it's like, it's almost like you've been like. No, they blessed you now. You you have a, your mural because look at the other mural. Manny Machado's on the block. Sí, you know, Jorge Alfaro's on the block. You got uh, Mario Lopez on the block. <laughs> you, there's a, so much art and murals on the block that it's like now it's Alex Guido. Ahí está el diez, todo el pedo. How awesome was that, man? No, it was no mames, no. I I can't even believe it right now. I was talking to my family about this that I got a, a bunch of messages from like ex teammates <laughs> when I used to play in Aztecs. And they would tell me, like, hey, wait, you made it. And they say, you're representing all of us. Yes. Like, you're living our dream. That's what we wanted. It's like, now I have kids, and they're looking up to you. And now that's their dream. Yeah, look, at that like, yeah. look at that handsome guy right there, man. Shit, why does that jersey look better on you than on me? What the no. fuck is going on, bro? I gotta fucking hit the gym. It's <laughs> not my other. <laughs> I like the way you try to fade that in, fool. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you fade it in, that shit didn't look good at me either. <laughs> how does that feel? That's a lot of responsibility you're carrying. Do you do you understand the objective? Do you understand the duty? Do you go on the pitch? Is there a moment before you step on the pitch before every 90 minutes where it's like, okay, this is para mi familia, para mi ciudad? Like, do you do you reflect on these kinds of things? Every time. Yeah. Every time I'm doing uh we're doing the ¿cómo se llama? cuando estamos todos. Parados uh -huh. y empiezan a cantar el... Hipno uh, Nacional. El Hipno Nacional. Mm -hmm. National Anthem national for my anthem. British speakers. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sorry. The National Anthem. I go into Spanglish mode. In <laughs> you and me yeah, both. Yeah, we were yeah. Chula Vista. Sorry, sorry. So that's how it is in the house, too. Yeah? Right. How is it on the pitch? Uh, Well, there wasn't many Latinos in our huh? team until now. Like, now I have Joe. Yeah. Y luego tengo a Coque atrás. Yeah, el Coque atrás. Yeah, yeah, man. Yo, pásamela, cabrón. Y así, ¿no? Así, ahora sí. Nice. Do you feel more comfortable haciendo eso? Yeah, I love it. Damn, like, even right there, bro. Do you feel more comfortable haciendo eso? <laughs> no mames, bro. <laughs> Oye, bro. Do you feel more comfortable haciendo eso? <laughs> <laughs> Only here we get away with shit like that. It's a little bit in San Diego, man. But I do have a couple of teammates where I would talk to them in Spanish. Yeah. Like Colin Martin. Uh -huh. Like, dale, cabrón. Or like Elijah, you know. But they get it, man. They get it. You know, they I mean, it. if you played yeah. soccer long enough in California, you, for sure, Spanish is your second language. Definitely. You're gonna get away with being able to pull that off every game, man. Yeah. Get the land, Landon. He's just got the skill set to put a jersey on and jump on and fight for minutes, or what? Bro, I don't for sure. Yeah. Toma la diez, wey. Llévatela, wey. Llévatela. Todavía, wey. Sí, wey. En serio? Does he ever go down on the pitches to say, "This is how you gotta do it"? Sometimes he goes in and like the the little. Reducidos, uh -huh. that's where you play like 5v5. Mm -hmm. And he's, you can tell the class, bro. Yeah. And then he does finishing and back con la izquierda, con, with the right, left, headers. Bro, he can head the fucking ball. I don't doubt it, it's bro. Crazy. It's crazy. way. So they, that skill set doesn't go away. Nah. You know, the skill set's there. Sometimes the body betrays what the brain is trying to convey. Right. But for him, he looks, he takes care of himself. So you he can does. you can tell that. It's like, what the... Somebody goes down. All right, fuck it. I'm gonna jump on the pitch. I'll I'll take the load, guys. I don't know if that's how he talks, but I, in my head, that's how Landon talks. <laughs> Landon Dolovan. The origin of the short shorts. Where did this come from? So the story is, I put icy hot mm. all over my legs. Arnica compa. Arnica. Eso. Right in icy hot. And those we got icy hot. American Y I would roll them up mm, mm. because it would get all over my, my, you know. Mm. So I started rolling it up 
And that <laughs> and didn't, didn't happen, happen anymore. It didn't happen anymore. <laughs> so I just kept doing it. And uh-huh. then people were like, hey, short shorts. Yeah. And it stuck. And I was like, fuck it, let's do it. You went with it, man. Yeah, I went with Shit, it. Shit, if I had legs like that, I'd wear short shorts too, fool. <laughs> That's fine. Who is this? What are we looking at? This is a youth squad. Mexico 2011 U17 World Cup. Look at you. Where are you? There you are. There I am. There you are. My beard. Nada clean f- shaven. Look at that guy. Fucking model and shit, bro. Mama. Look at no sleeves. Fuck it. We don't go sleeves. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. No problem. No problem. Kira, all your squads, bro. Oh man, there's uh, honestly look at. I've been I've been told Trafford second to none. Watching Manchester United play Liverpool there second to none. But going to us, I jugar and mirar en caliente, bro. So tropeado, bro. Sí, go, yeah. Going to matches in caliente, so close to here. Yeah. Casas, you've been there after HK, usually, or before. <laughs> que, the order of events for you in Tijuana is HK y luego el partido, o el partido y luego el HK. Yeah, yeah, partido y luego el HK. Sí, <laughs> I get it. It's yeah. awesome, bro. Sí, el vato. <laughs> digo, 24-hour buffet? Shit, I'm in. I'm going. <laughs> well, we're going right now after this. We were very uh, celebratory. We like to, you know, make our guests feel welcome. <laughs> but yeah, man, going to caliente, watching Cholos play. Watching Cholos play Copa Libertadores, bro. That's oh. how fucking spoiled we are here as San Diego fans of, of football now is we can go watch world-class soccer on both sides of the borders, bro. Yeah, no manches. Like before? We, didn't have that we had nothing, nothing bro. bro. Before Cholos, we had nothing. You know, we had the flash. Uh, there's club soccer and club soccer down here has always been stellar. Dog. Yeah. You're from down here. You're, you're right. part of the core group of players in their 20s right now that are fucking killing it. Paul Ariola, dog. Yeah. No mames. No mames. Joe Corona. Pff, doble. Usted. Viejon. In my era, it was a different, it was a different player, Steve Chirundolo, uh, San Diego stay doing his bill. So it, it just seems to like get better and better. And if you broaden the scope into so- the region of Southern California, honestly, bro, second to none. There's yeah. the, the level of talent as it relates to athleticism, um, style of play. And I don't know, it's because we're so close to Mexico, South American borders, borders, borders. The style of play that comes out of, uh, of Southern California, way. No, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful bro. It's just a mixture of like, like you said, lo Latino y lo Americano. Mm. Mm. The oh, best yeah. of both worlds. The best of both worlds. Oh, look at this right here, man. <laughs> oh, wait, well, man, how do you keep playing at 28 after being six years old playing? That passion, it, it still burns inside of you to go? It still burns. Bro. Fuck and yeah, it's gonna bro. Keep going. I want to be a fucking coach after That's this. the goal. That's the goal. The, the, the post-soccer playing career is to be a coach. Yes. And teaching kids to roll their shorts up hasta las nalgas, hasta arriba, hasta arriba, bro. Get it, dog. Fuck. Good for you, man. Sí, güey. Actually, that's my real passion, coaching. The way you speak, I see it. You're very passionate about I, it. I was 11, 12, and I was like, I want to be a coach. I want to be a coach. More than a, prof- I want to be a professional soccer coach. En serio. Te lo juro. What are the ro- what, what's the roadmap to get to that? So I got my professional coaching license from Mexico. Mm-hmm. I already have that. And that's uh, two and a half years. Plus it's con Femex Food. Mm. And then right now I'm doing my B license with the with the US soccer. And they have a bunch of licenses from F to the pro one. It, it, it's, it's awesome to actually see that because a lot of people on social media who have these credentials, they'll put it on there. Yeah. And, they, and they put the level of coach that they're at. So right. it's something prestigious. Yeah. It's something that people really like hold near and dear to their hearts as, as passionate and working towards that ultimate goal. For so sure. you want to you want to be a coach. That's what I want to do, man. Well, you're already doing it on the pitch pretty much. I'm Being the team try. leader, that's what it is. I try. I mean, yeah. It, it, I'm learning a lot. You know? What what's been the most surprising thing since you came to the Loyal? What has surprised you the most about being on the Loyal? The culture, the team mm. culture. You know, we're a family, man. Other teams, it was more individuals, you know. It was here Everyone is like a brother. You're like, hey, what's up? You talk. No, it's normal, way. It's not normal. Bro. Really? It isn't. That's the crazy part about football. It's not normal. And the ones that do that are the ones that make it, bro. Top, yeah, top performers. But it is normal. But it's cierto. This is the one sport mm-hmm. where team unity shines through on the pitch, man. Exactly. If there's a weak link, uh, it could bring the whole team down. For sure. If, if there's somebody that. Hasn't bought into the culture, hasn't bought into the style of play. 
I can see that shit derailing a squad and just taking it all the way down, bro. Really? Have you ever been a part of something like that? Where cuando hay un cancer en el equipo? For sure. Yeah. yeah. A, lot of, a lot of egos in, in professional soccer. Oh, my God. You have no idea. Oh, man. It's crazy, man. Who's the biggest ego you ever dealt with? You can just whisper it to me. You don't, have to, don't worry about it. <laughs> hey, he's thinking about it. He's going to do it, dog. ¿Quién fue, güey? ¿Quién fue? Tú dime. No le digo de nadie. Nomás te voy a decir que es un colombiano. Inga, su Con madre, eso. Bro. Say less, dog. Say less. Madre mía, güey. Yeah. Qué ego tenía. Yeah. But How was, do you handle that? How do you handle being a teammate with somebody like that? It, it got to the part that it was funny. You know? Yeah. You were like, oh, it's. Like, like some like, Kenny Power shit? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. No, I was like, it's him, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, that's just, but that made, that's why he was so good. Yeah. You know? It's kind of weird, you know? On the pitch only or off the pitch as well? Both, both, both. Oh, she stayed in character for life. Personaje. Oh, Personaje. Man. But it was, it was method crazy, actor. bro. He's a method actor for life. <laughs> 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 he took crazy. that shit to the grave with him all the way, <laughs> man. Wow, man. Yeah, it was, it was pretty nuts, man. But I learned so much because as a coach, you need to deal with all these egos. Damn, so you've been just prepping for your post-football career all your career. I write everything down, bro. Do you really? Yeah, I write everything. Journaling and all? Journaling, everything, yeah. So not a dance career, huh? Hmm, because we have a video that says otherwise. Oh, 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 oh shit. Oh, oh. El vato, que si no. Oh, my God, look at those savages. Oh, my God. You don't believe me about the short shorts? Watch right now. You're going to see. Oh, yeah. Wait, go ahead. Look at him, man. Alejandro Guido, bro. What is your uh, regiment look like when you are playing huh? as opposed to when you're not playing? Whether it's training, whether it's food, whether it's alcohol consumption, yeah. partying, letting your hair down. What? How does it differ from season to season? Uh, so during the season, I try to be as clean as possible. Disciplined. Disciplined. Yeah. Just... Do my thing, eat well. Uh, I I'm a I'm a fucking foodie, bro. Get it? Like I already said, when I'm when I retire, we're gonna be pants away. Pues aquí estamos. Sí, this is what a retired. <laughs> Casa, put the camera on you first, please. Retired body number one, sas. <laughs> retired body number two. <laughs> like in my head, I know the plays I want to do on the pitch, but my body laughs at me. It's like, wait, yeah, you know, no, 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 pasar, wait, yeah, déjate. Not even on FIFA PS5, bro, can I pull those things off? So you have to be disciplined. Yeah, for bro. sure. I have to be disciplined. It doesn't come natural to me because I love to eat mm. tacos. Best tacos en Tijuas. Frank para mí. Sí, eh? You like the beans? Ay, me gustan. Yeah. Frank. Hay unos en Rosarito que están muy buenos. El trailero. ¿Esos son? I think it's, oh, Ensenada. Ah, Ensenada. Ensenada. Tacos del trailero. Buenos, yeah. yeah. Pero after games, I would always go to El Taconazo. Mm. It was just right, right there next to the stadium. Go ahead, bro. Where else did you go yeah. after the games? <laughs> Comida china. You <laughs> monster. You're a monster. Uh, este es el 10, bro. <laughs> Así nos hablo con el 10. No, man. What was that lifestyle playing with Cholos, bro? It was pretty crazy, man. I don't doubt it. It's yeah. a zoo on the facility, it's bro. A zoo, bro. <laughs> That's nuts. I couldn't believe it, bro. Oh, shit. The family, they would go and do the carnazada uh, outside. Yeah. And there was a fucking tiger behind What's them, up, bro. man? <laughs> Bro, did you know that, Casas? No, There's a know. fucking zoo at Caliente, bro. Oh, the owner, we won't mention names or anything, but the owner, bro, he gets down, dog. It is sick one mentality when he's building out his stadium right next to the casino and all the bro. Have you ever, t tell this motherfucker what it's like partying outside of a match? Well, you know, you don't, but you, you've had family outside and then coming into the match, bro. What do you mean? Es otro pedo afuera. Es ah, una, un fiesto, sí, no, no hay banda, hay norteño, hay todo, hay todo bro. todo, güey. Es una fiesta, güey. Yeah. That's what's cool about it. It's a party, bro. How do we bring that atmosphere here, man? That's what I want. Ricardo, let, make that shit happen, bro. Yeah, like in the parking lot. Bro. Algo, bro. Yeah, Algo. Nice. I think Snapdragon can do that, Yeah? Too. Uh, maybe, maybe. What do we know about Snapdragon? What are we doing? What's I don't the move? know, what man. We... I don't know what's up with that, but yeah. I'm hearing things. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know. That's all I can say. Hey, I'm say it in things. Spanish, bro. Say it in Spanish. What are you doing? bro. Que escuchaste, bro. No, I think we were about to go to Snapdragon. I don't know why. why you guys are built for it. Yeah. Wave went in there, killed it, man. Doing yeah. their thing. Yeah. Now imagine having you guys play there as well. Wait, no, mom, is bro. That would That'd be, be my goal. Because I remember being a youngster going to Qualcomm to watch El Tri play. Mm -hmm. Watch El Tri against fucking Sweden, against Denmark. Against, right. You know, and just watching them play. And it, fuck, the party wasn't at the game. The party was on the freeway. 
You know, in yeah, the yeah, back of your exactly. parents' truck, waving a fucking flag that's 20 times that's bigger true. than you. No seatbelts, no nothing. You're just out there having a good time. That's People true. fall out of the truck. You get back in, right? Pelo, no pasa nada. <laughs> but the party started on the freeway and then ultimately rolled into Qualcomm. You're just hanging out in the stadium. I had more fun sometimes outside listening to the game on a radio than actually going inside and watching the match in person, bro. This yeah. madre. Imagine that, dog, at Snapdragon. Imagine that at a fucking stadium down here in the South Bay somewhere. That would be the goal. I yeah, think that would that be the is, pinnacle of all things, bro. Bro, that, that atmosphere is far and none the best, bro. <sighs> Está cabrón, güey. Las carnes asadas que se hacen ahí, güey. Mm, mm. No, man. Es el hoy, los niños ahí jugando, playing soccer, you know, by the cars and shit. Oh, I love that. That's, that's, I, that's what I used to do. I yeah? remember, yeah. Because you were in Tijuana too as a, uh, as a youngster, right? Yeah, I was in Tijuana. So I, I lived in Tijuana. My grandparents live in Chula Vista. And... This is crazy. This I always like to talk about this because I got to shout out my parents. They're, the, the amount of love and sacrifice they gave us is why I'm here. Without that, in all honesty, oh, no, there is no Guido playing no, in right no, now, no professionally chance. anywhere. No, no, no chance, bro. Mm. Like, no chance. Look what they would do. So we lived in Tijuana. They would wake up five in the morning. One, one of my parents would go to the border, stay in the line. Then we, another one would wake us up, take us there, cross the border, go to school. They yeah. did that for 25 years. And here's the thing, man. The, the thing about it is that story is not unique to no. the Gilo family, bro. No. That story is, is a story that's been told multiple times yeah. throughout the generations. My cousins, bro, my cousins live in Colonia Libertad. And ever since uh, elementary school, all the way through college, they would live in Tijuas. They would commute across the border every morning, up at three, four in the morning, cross, come over to our house, hang out there in the morning. Then we would walk to school every day. Why? Because the opportunity is here for us. The opportunity is here. Not that there's no opportunity in Tijuana and Baja California and Mexico overall. It's just that there's more opportunity. It's readily available to us because this is one of those countries where if you exert yourself and you continue to your path and you work hard, there's an opportunity for you. For sure. And your parents put it all on the line. Put it all on the line and then they would wait for me and take me to practice here then take me to practice the TJ and then come back La mama haciéndome el sandwich, you know, I was. It's a full time commitment, bro. Full time. That's why. That's why I'm here. Yeah, and that's you give I'm love here. and respect. Your parents were there at, at the mural, right? They were. Yeah. They okay. Were. Yeah. I, I yeah. could tell that they meant to you something to you because you were very protective of them doing your thing. How do they feel about your successes now? Oh my god, my dad he cries every time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mural. Because he... your shorts are short, or why does he cry? <laughs> ¿Qué dice? ¡Mijo! No, no, no tiene nada. Mijo, sube. Sube este pantalón, mijo. <laughs> That must be a great feeling, bro. Sí, That must be a sí. great feeling. La verdad que sí, afortunado. O sea, aparte, that they can see me here. You know, mm -hmm. like they watch my games. ¿Se les hacía más fácil ir a Tijuana a verlo jugar o aquí en San Diego? Um, we, we live in, in Chula Vista now, mm. so... Uh, here in east side, west side. Go ahead. West, uh, east side. All right. East side. What's your taco shop? I just go to TJ. For a taco shop? For a burrito? You can't go to Tijuana for a burrito, fool. Oh, for a burrito? I, I go to Lolita's. It's right next to Did you to hear us. that, George? <laughs> Did you hear that? He goes to Lolita's. All right? Yeah. Well done. Good answer. Te pago al rato. What's your, your go-to burrito? <laughs> eh, Cali. Cali? Cali Oof. Sí, with sour sí, cream sí, or sí. with guacamole? Con todo. El vato dijo, sí, fuck sí. my eating regimen. Sí, I'm eating sí, dirty sí. today. Todo. Yeah? Hell yeah. What about tacos? You go to uh, El Tacos del Gordo, Revolución. Been, Which I've ones? I've been Tacos del Gordo. I've been there for sure. Eh, nunca he ido a Revolución. No. Está está bien, güey. Yeah, me, me cae porque la tortilla lo hacen ahí. Oh, look at that. That guy is Gus. He's the one who makes the tortilla, so he gets down too. Oh, sure. But yeah, man. Chula Vista is so big. Chula Vista spans from the mountains to the ocean. You, you want summertime in Chula Vista? You got it. We got beachy areas. There's desert areas. There's snow in the mountains now. Aquí en Chula Vista y en San Diego, hay todo, güey. Sí, we don't got to go sí. anywhere, bro. I agree. I agree. What are your goals? Let's get, the, aside My from, the, yeah, now do you plan on having a family and, and bequeathing your talents and knowledge to a child? Is that the goal? Being a, a coach to your son or your daughter's team? You have no idea, bro. Uf, a ver, cuéntame, güey. Raving. Yeah? For sure. But I told my wife in four years. Yeah? Yeah. I actually, I wanted a kid before uh -huh. because I wanted him to, or her 
to see me, you yes. know, take them up to like when we were walking out, nice. put them in your shoulders and then experience I that. got three kids, bro. If you want to borrow one for the match, hey. let me know, bro. ¿Cuál le mandamos, güey? Le damos el Sunny, el Ollie will jag. You can like, take all a three, bro. Tres, a los tres, güey. Ten, eight, and five. They, they'll be there. Hey, sí, <laughs> Trust me, bro. You, you, you <laughs> In those minutes, I see, güey, llévatelos. <laughs> That'll be a quick turnaround, bro. Nah, man. That, that, there must be nothing more beautiful for you as a professional athlete, somebody everybody looks up to and and holds in high regard to have your own children be out there and witnessing you do the things that you do as a profession as a career as a passion bro felicidades i heard you Gracias. you're you're three years married now that's right got married first year of the pandemic or first month of the pandemic yeah but one month before hey, the pandemic not though, bro look at you, See you look at you man oh. so we said around 33 34 33 34 yeah, we'll that's a good decide. age how old were you when you had kids guys says me 30 30 i was 33 the day the, the year jesus died um <laughs> <laughs> i was 33 yes and, and then we just popped out kids like for the next five years bing bang boom yeah. and then we said sas ya no más bro ya son tres cabrón la, sí, factoría. Se re, la factoría se cerró mm -hmm. um and they had three kids now in this era is nothing scarier it's expensive. It, yeah. Yeah, güey, no <laughs> it's otro pedo, bro. <laughs> what, what can we do to help continue grow the brand, uh, the loyal brand, the Gilo brand, just the passion for soccer here in the South Bay and South San Diego? What, what, what do you feel you can do? What do you feel everyone here can do in the community to continue to grow this thing of ours? Well, one of the things I want to do is to hold clinics, you know? Mm. Like, go to, no sé, wey, San Isidro, mm. Chula Vista, National City, like, all this area, and offer clinics and, like, just train kids that maybe want to get to experience being with a pro, like, what it takes, like, give them an idea, be their role model there, and tell them, like, hey, you can do it, you know? It just takes a lot of hard work, discipline, and show them those values. And I think that's a way we can connect with kids with families for them to understand like, Hey, like this is a good person. This is a good team. Like these are good values. This represents the community. That's, that's how I think I can help. You know, what makes it real? What, what makes it real is that you are living proof of that. You know, what makes it real is that you look like the kids that are trying to reach that level, you know, um, maybe once upon a time that wasn't the case, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't anybody from our community or from, from our culture that looked like us that did what you're currently doing. So you, it's not just walking the walk or talking the talk It's doing both. You know, you've done it. You came from here. Your parents showed an enormous amount of effort to get you to where you are now. And now you're firing on all cylinders. You know, you're, you're killing it with your squad. You're, you're doing all of the things you ever wanted to do. Have you reached all of your goals since you were little? Uh, when you sat down and you're just hanging out like, hey, un día quiero jugar con tal y tal. Otro día quiero hacer esto. Y quiero beneficiar de eso. Like, have you hit all of those goals that you set for yourself since you were a little guy? I have. I have hit many of them. But one that I, I've been craving all my life is to go to a World Cup. What's the word? Okay. Is it, we still on that track? Can we can we make that happen? I mean, I'm gonna I'll keep trying. That's my guy. I'm gonna bro. keep trying until yeah. my legs don't let me anymore. Con las rodillas ya se me caigan, güey. See, mm -hmm. fuck, man, because the people don't understand how difficult soccer is. Yeah. A physical, it's a very physical sport. It's it's very draining on your on your legs, man. Two ACLs. Two. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Yeah. The same one or two? A uh, different one. Yeah. I tore one, uh, and then played two games. Seven months out, uh -huh. tore the tore other one. one again. Yeah. Uh, Tough. That derailed it a little bit. Your goal, or oh, for sure? Yeah. I, how many I, years off did you take because of that? Like a year, two years. Two years, right? Yeah, I was out for two uh, years. How do you how do you mentally cope with being sidelined for two years? Bro, I was depressed as shit. See? Fuck yeah, dude. It's like they tell you, oh, you can't do podcasts. Mm. You're not a podcaster anymore. You can't do brewing, mm. but you every day you have to go in and watch, and watch somebody do, do it, it, bro. And you have to do like little exercises, like oh, like I'm gonna work on my voice or something uh. like that. You know, my vocal cords, so I can start talking again. Oh, I literally man. had to start walking again, bro. I didn't know, like I couldn't walk. Things like that. Then running, then cutting, and then but all the time you're watching your team play, so you don't feel like a. Like a soccer player. A no. Player. no. You felt like a spectator? I felt like a spectator. I felt like 
I felt bad even like earning money. Yeah. You know, like I was like, I'm not doing my job. But everything that you've done in your past led you to yeah. the skill set that you have now to get paid for that. Right. So now, I mean, you you were definitely earning your pay, but I could imagine this being a blow to all things Gilo, bro. Just taking you taking the air out of your 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 passion. But there you are working hard. That's Two right. years later, coming back doing your thing. That's right. You know, Started that's crazy, working. man. Yeah. That men, the mental health aspect, I feel, is something that um, just now more than ever is, is a layer that we're starting to. Um, communicate about a little bit more freely. You know, you, 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 I've talked to a few athletes, a few artists and musicians and everything. And they're, you know, ever since the pandemic, it's like, oh man, mental health is a tropeo. Like if, you, you, if you can't take care of what's going inside, you can't be expected to perform what you're excellent at at all. Like it's just going to be very difficult to climb that mountain when, when you take the mental game out of it, man. 100%. Football, I'm imagining, is the, no different. Once I took care of that, and continue to take care of that, my game changed. See? 100%. Yeah, man. 100%, bro. It changed completely. Like, I got to another level. I'm being consistent now. Look at that. I couldn't walk, bro. Oh, man. At one point, did you figure you just want to throw in the towel? No more playing? Oh, for sure. Yeah? yeah what kept you going? Uh, my family. Yeah? They were like... We didn't get up early to go up across the border for you to give up now. My wife, yeah. wife and girlfriend, they were like, I was telling, I would tell them, I told her when I told her before, if I ever say I want to quit football, don't let me. Mm. And she stuck to that. Yeah. Like, no te voy a dejar. No she had to check dejar. you. Yeah. No te voy a dejar. No te voy a dejar. Look at that. And I was like, okay. Three years later, married now. Look yeah. at you. Bro. She's the one. Look at you. She's the one. Felicidades on that, yeah, dude. Looks like you're firing on all cylinders, bro. You're a success in all things doing right now. I la llevo, güey. Todavía tengo mis pedos, pero hey. pues chingándole. ¿Qué más hay, bro? Todo, no wey. pasa nada, no pasa man. Nada. No pasa nada, I'm bro. enjoying the ride. Why wouldn't you, bro? Yeah, you are bro. living a blessed dream. You've yeah. worked hard. Mm -hmm. You earn these things now. This is your time to just, you know, enjoy the fruits of your labor, bro. You get to enjoy all of these things. Talk to me, talk to me about missing the first game and now going up against our rivals. There are rivals, right? Oh, for sure. Second to none. Big time. Déjate Las Vegas, Orange County, nada. No, no, Phoenix. no, no. Phoenix. Phoenix. Phoenix yeah. Rising. These are the guys. These are the games. Bro. Yeah? That's where you feel it. Why did I think we were in Phoenix this week? Why did I think we weren't playing at home? Because we just played at home. Uh -huh. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird to have back to back, yeah. And then it's away. I, I understand that. So I, it's, I, here. I, it's here. It's here. It's here. We got to go. Casas. Anímate, güey. Will we beat Phoenix this week? For sure. Sin duda. Sin pedo. Uf, ¿Cuántos goles estás a chingar, güey? No sé, pero me va a chingar a alguien. Otra vez, güey. <laughs> what the fuck, leader? We just talked about this earlier. I want to be a leader. I don't want to get a red card. No, I'm going to no, fuck no, somebody no. up this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm messing around. No, no you're not. I, I see the fire. Get it, bro. Get it. Get it. I want my jersey for you today, bro. The players there, remember? Yeah. The other players. I'll be there. I'm going to go. Okay. I didn't think I was going to yeah. go because I didn't think it was in town. But no. now that I know it's in town, I'm going to take That's my kiddos, it. bro. That's Damn. Phoenix Rise, bro. Are you going to sit at the 109? Uh, Those things are sold out forever. Really? We just usually sneak in there. We we sneak into the supporter section and, and, and oh. cheer it on. But I, yeah. I think those those that area has been sold out forever, bro. Real? Yeah, el año pasado compramos boletos, casi no íbamos. But you know, we got three hands. There's always something going on. But oh man, now that I I, I get to know uh, Ricardo, you know, mm -hmm. I talked to Darren Smith. He loves you guys, man. He's at all the games. Now that I know you, I you know, it makes it more personal for me, and it makes me like legitimately want to share my experience, whether it's here or just like on social media. I feel like you know, because that could be my part, just kind of pushing it and making making sure I help in any which way, man. But ooh, San Diego loyal, bro. Look at you. Who would have thought? Who would have fucking thought, no, dog? Any final words for people listening to you, Gilo? Anything you'd like to say to your fans, the supporter groups, before we go? Yeah, man. There's been a lot of people following throughout the years, and they've stuck with me. You know, they, they've supported me in the bad times. Like, right now, I'm in a high. Like, I'm enjoying my soccer and everything. But there was so many difficult times. And they were there with me, you know, through the thick and thin. So now that I'm enjoying it, I want to enjoy it with them. And I want to give back everything, all the support they've given. I want to give back to my community and to the sport. Boom. Well, we're here to make sure we can help in any way. Ricardo Campos, thank you for making this happen. Tom, Tomas, bro, your bro Tom, Thomas, thank you for making this happen here with us as well. Shout out Thomas. Mm, what's up? Another Bonita boy, dog. Bonita Vista versus the world. Casas, you go to Bonita? 
No. That's why I don't like you, motherfucker. That's exactly <laughs> why I don't. Chula, oh, perdón. I went to school with AC Slater. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, thank you for taking time to hang out with us today, man. La Mera Neta, you are just as awesome in person than you are on the football pitch. It's a pleasure to get to know you, and I look forward to growing our relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, and Alex Guido Ching. <laughs> I'm gonna see a cantinero. You told me you were drinking and wasting money now. Talking about how many ways a woman loves.